Good evening and welcome to Mr. Wickens Reads, The Outlaw Varjak Paul, with kind permission from the amazing author S.F. Said, illustrated by Dave McKean. Um, and we're on chapter 10 tonight. The first shout outs. Oh man, okay, they're all coming in now. Um, Will North from North Yorkshire. Hello, welcome back. Good to it's good to have you with us again. And also, massive shout out to the whole of year four. Uh, Perry Hall Primary School. Um, really glad you're listening. I'm really glad you enjoyed the first one. And oh man, so Mr. Um, Mr. Ferguson sent me, uh, well, told me last time that you were going to do some DT projects on Varjack Paul, and he sent me the photo of your stuff. This is amazing. Okay, everyone's got to have a look at this. Check this out. Uh, isn't it incredible? Look at that massive Varjak Paul post there with the eyes, the amber eyes. And then we can see that there's all of the city that Varjak goes around and looks at. You can see the road there. You can see the buildings. Um, there's a cat down at the bottom there. Oh, my goodness. There's the walls, um, the garden walls with the trees as well. There's so much in there to look at. What a fantastic project. Well done, Everybody, um, give yourselves a pat on the back. That is incredible. And thank you so much for sending it in too. Woohoo! Isn't that amazing? Incredible. So thank you, Year 4 from Perry Hall and Mr Ferguson. Absolutely amazing. Right, chapter 10. Here we go. Varjak woke before dawn. It was cold and grey in the harbour yard. Someone was poking him in the ribs. He opened his eyes and saw Holly. All around the yard, the street cats were asleep. Come on, whispered Holly. Enough dreaming, time for action. She strode up the steps. Varjak and Tam followed her silently out of the yard. The harbour looked empty and desolate in the pre-dawn light. Winter wind lashed the water. Varjak felt its chill and shivered. Holly led them west, following the gang's tracks towards Sally Bones' territory. There were few cars on the road, no people on the pavements. Old snow lay in drifts on the streets. It was hardening into slippery ice. Varjak's pads kept skidding beneath him. He had to fight to keep his balance on the treacherous ground. In the distance, he could hear an eerie howling. It was wordless, but it seemed to be telling him something. Don't come here, it seemed to say. Turn back and go away. What's that howling, he wondered, the fur on the back of his neck prickling. It's coming from the storm drain, said Holly, looking at an ugly concrete structure off the road. Don't ever go there. They say wild things live in it. Right, Tam? <coughs> oh, don't know, panted Tam. Never been there. Never want to. <coughs> they kept away from the storm drain and followed the tracks west. They came to a crossroads on the border of Sally Bones' territory. There was a building site on this side of the crossroads. The earth had been overturned. Um, the ground was ripped open. Machines with iron claws stood poised over pits dug deep in the ground. The buildings here were half demolished, their foundations exposed. A wrecking ball dangled from a crane, idle at this time of day. On the other side of the crossroads, great glass buildings rose from the earth, towering over the city. They pierced the belly of the sky, their upper reaches invisible. They looked sharp-edged and steely in the pre-dawn light. Varjak's awareness started to tingle. There was something familiar up ahead, an unnatural scent, ghostly. He edged forwards, and as he reached the crossroads, he saw where it came from. A tail. A cat's tail laid out in the gutter, where people wouldn't see it, but as clear as a traffic light to any passing cat. And just along from it, mangled, filthy, but unmistakable, a pair of ears, soft, furry ears, cat's ears. Varjak stepped back a pace. His mouth had gone dry. Ears and a tail on their own? What were they doing here in the gutter? It didn't make any sense. Varjak's own ears flattened, his tail curled up tight. To lose them, the thought was too horrible. Oh, my, said Holly. She'd just seen them. 
Tam shut her eyes. I warned you, I warned you, but you wouldn't listen. Holly shook her fur as if shaking off water. It's all right, she said. It's nothing to do with us. Let's keep going. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you, came a voice from ahead. Standing in the crossroads facing them were two new cats. They were more like lions than cats, powerfully built with shaggy manes of fur and bushy tails. They moved a little slowly, but they were the biggest, strongest looking cats Varjak had ever seen. The one who spoke was about Razor's height, but he was incredibly stocky and broad across the chest. The other one was even larger. I said, I wouldn't do that, repeated the stocky one. His paws were blunt and dusty. Don't you know whose territory this is? Of course we do said Holly, backing away from the crossroads. So, what are you doing here? said the stocky one. Can't you see what's in the gutter? Varjak glanced at the ears and tail again. His heart sank. Holly didn't seem to know these cats. Were they from Sally Bones' gang? They sounded like it, and their faces, faces were scarred like razors. We were just going, said Holly. Oh, no, you're not. The two cats strode forwards, rugged manes bristling. Varjak, Holly and Tam backed away towards a half-demolished building on the site behind them. We're looking for the outlaw, said the stocky one. A silver-blue cat called Varjak Poor, who fights like Sally Bounds. Is that you? He squinted slowly at Varjak. Him? <laughs> Laughed Holly at once. Uh, that's a good one. He's just a pet who got lost, aren't you, Snowflake? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's right said Varjak, sharp as ever. Holly had seen these cats could be bluffed. His only chance was to play along. I'm Snowflake, and I'm lost. I'm looking for my home. Can you help me? He smiled sweetly, through his, though his pulse was racing. The stocky cat scratched his head. He's a funny-looking thing, isn't he? I thought Varjak Paul would be bigger. Didn't you, Ozzy? Yep said the giant cat, speaking at last. Oh, I don't think he could be the one after all, but go on, see what he's made of, might as well. Ozzy beamed. OK, Omar, thanks. Varjak braced himself as Ozzy squared up for a fight. This was a test. If he used the way, they'd know who he was, and that would be that. He had to face Ozzy without it, and without his friends. Holly and Tam couldn't help him any more because Omar was keeping them in check. There's no need for this, growled Holly. We don't want to fight. <laughs> no one wants to fight Ozzy, crowed Omar. But you've got no choice. Ozzy came barreling through the air. Varjak rolled aside just in time, but the giant caught his flank as he went. Glancing blow, powerful enough to knock him over. Varjak came up into a crouch, defending his flank as he got his breath back. How could he beat a cat like this without his skills? Even with them, he'd struggle against an opponent so immensely big and strong. Ozzy marched forwards, legs thick as lampposts. Varjak backed up into the building site. The ground was strewn with rubble. With three steps, he was up against a wall, and Ozzy was still coming. A huge paw shot out. Varjak ducked. Ozzy hit the wall above him. A cloud of dust rose where Varjak's head had been. He had to get away. A hit like that could kill him. He fainted left and right, but wherever he turned, Ozzy was still in the way. The giant cat grinned, lifted Varjak clean off his paws and sent him crashing into the wall. Varjak twisted midair, but he couldn't avoid the impact. His bones jarred, his vision blurred. Above he saw the crane, the wrecking ball, the broken buildings. Ozzy was squaring up to finish him off. You'd better run, whooped Omar. It's your only chance. Varjak staggered to his paws, heart pounding, out of breath. He wanted to run, desperately, but he knew only Ozzy would only catch him. It's useless trying to fight, he thought. I can't beat this cat for power, but if I could somehow use his power against him. He held himself still, in front of the wall. His heart was thumping like a jackhammer, but he stood his ground and beckoned to Ozzy. Is that all you can do, he called. I thought you were supposed to be strong. Ozzy looked startled for a second, and then he poured the ground and charged at Varjak with maximum force. Varjak stood there, totally still, until the last possible moment, and then dived under the charge. Crunch! 
The giant crashed headfirst into the wall. Varjak sprang away, breathing hard. The fight was surely finished. He turned to look. Ozzy was just dusting himself off. Yeah! yelled Omar. You can't hurt Oz. He can't feel a thing. Ozzy grinned, a gap-toothed grin. He looked like he was having fun. Oh, but he's good, Omar. He's brave. I think he's the one. Can I find him some more, please? No, that's enough, little brother, said Omar, suddenly very serious. He turned to Varjak. I only saw one cat who didn't run away from Ozzy before, and that was Sally Bones. So you must be Varjak Paul, and those stories must be true. With those words, they bowed down before Varjak. So did Ozzy. They flattened themselves into the rubble before him. At your service, said they said together. Omar and Ozzy, the horrible twins, the strongest cats in town. Varjak stared at them in disbelief. Holly and Tam were staring too. Uh, you're not in Sally Bones' gang, are you? said Holly. You're outlaws. I remember now. Luca said they were looking for twin cats, one big and one bigger. Outlaws and proud of it, said Omar, standing up again. Outlaws, breathed Tam. She groomed her bushy tail. We're outlaws too. We weren't always, said Omar. We were in Ginger's gang the old, in the old days before Sally Bones. Then she made us join her gang. It was a nightmare. She used to slash us just to prove she was boss. We were stronger than her, but she's oh, she's the only one who knows that secret way of fighting. Ozzy flinched. The scar on his face quivered. Don't say it, Omar. I don't want to remember. Anyway, we got away from her. And now we've met the cat who's going to put this city right. Snowflake. He looked at Varjak and grinned his gap tooth grin. You're not really called Snowflake, are you? Varjak couldn't help grinning back. No, no, I'm not. You're right. I'm Varjak. So why are you really going to her territory? Said Omar. A patrol took a friend of ours away from last. Uh, a patrol took a friend of ours away last night. Said Holly. A kitten. Omar glanced at the ears and tail in the gutter. Your friend needs help. What do you know about those ears? Said Farjack. You don't know. Said Omar. It's don't say it. Said Holly. It's too horrible. That's why it needs to be said. Omar clenched his big blunt paws, because that is Sally Bones's mark. That's the punishment for breaking her laws. She rips your ears and tail off and leaves them out for everyone to see. What? She can't do that? Varjak looked at Holly, hoping she'd say Omar, Omar was wrong, that it was some kind of mistake. But she didn't. You remember that, that animal we saw outside the secret alleys? She said, that was a cat. A cat with no ears and no tail. Varjak's mind started to spin, so now he knew why Tam was so scared and why the street cats in the yard went silent when she mentioned it, when he'd mentioned it. Nobody stops her, he whispered. Nobody can, said Omar, and if you don't act fast, this will what will happen to your friend. Varjak's face burned. This was outrageous, the most outrageous thing he'd ever heard. He turned away, but everyone was looking at him. He could feel it, and he could feel his own power rising in him like a flame. No, he said, striding into the crossroads. It's not going to happen to Jess. And that's the end of chapter 10. Oh man, two new cats and they're on Varjak's team. Yes, come on. God, we've got to save Jess before that horrible thing happens to her. Right, excellent. Thank you very much. Keep the shout outs coming in. Keep the artwork and the projects coming in. Lovely to see them. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. No, I won't. I'll see you Monday at 6.30. Brilliant. Take care. Bye for now.